Hello boys and girls, you need to make sure you've got something to write with and something to write on. Get yourself a five minute timer, it can be a song you like, it can be a clock, whatever, doesn't matter. Five minutes or so for your Star Trek activity. So pause the video until you've got that stuff ready. Okay, so we're continuing with radiation this week and our first task is looking back at some of the stuff we've already looked at. So we've got, um, you need to write the definition of an isotope and the definition of what half-life is. You need to find out what the half-life of this sample is, and you need to find out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons of these four atoms. Okay, the symbols are the same as some of the ones you've done before, but the number of neutrons is going to be different. Okay, um, so pause the video here, spend four or five minutes trying to answer these little questions. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. You spent five or four or five minutes on these questions. If you haven't, make sure you pause the video and give it a go. But the answers are here. So we've got isotopes are forms of an element that have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. Half-life is the time it takes. You need to make sure you've got the word time taken at the beginning. The time taken for the activity of a radioactive sample to drop by one half. Now you can change the activity for the mass of the isotope, or you can change it to how much radiation is given out by an isotope, or you can... So it's something sensible, so long as you've got the time taken. This graph, okay, my little blue arrows aren't as, quite as clear as I thought they are going to be, but we have start value is um, 100,000. We think about half of that. Half of that is 50,000. We go along, hit the graph, and go down, and it's somewhere above 2.5 below 4 so if you've got somewhere around 3.5 that's good i'll accept any answers from two two and a half to three almost four okay so anything like that so you just want to write the method that's fine for my isotopes we've got um one proton five protons 17 protons 11 protons the protons and the electron number are the same the neutrons we take the big number and we subtract the little number from it. So 3 take away 1 is 2, and 13 take away 5 is 8, uh, 23 take away 11 is 12, 35 take away 17 is 17. Let me just double check that one. Um, but these are my little starter questions. Now, the last couple of weeks, I think, looking at half-life, look at the graphs, and look at those calculations, that's probably the hardest, that's no, no probably about it, that is the hardest part of atomic structure that's tough. Um, it's, it's tricky and it's one of the harder things in your GCC I actually think I think conceptually it's it's pretty difficult and then the maths gets confusing and it's, and it's it's very different from stuff you've looked at before okay so if you've been finding it difficult don't stress too much it is hard okay as long as you do the work give it a go um, you will get it okay you will get it practice make perfect as they say now this week's stuff I think is interesting and I don't think it is as difficult okay this week we're looking at contamination versus irradiation okay now i've got a picture that helps me think about what the two words mean so these two words might be new you might have heard of contamination before you might have heard of irradiation before but you need to know the specific meanings okay so i've got a little cartoon of a chap holding a plate of smelly fish there's the smell it's not on fire it's a smell kind of it's a smell that smell coming off of the fish and then i've got the rock who is wait let me just he was smelling something and he can smell the fish. He can smell it. So that smell has travelled across this PowerPoint slide and it's able to, to influence the rock. The rock can smell it. Okay, he can smell the fish that this guy is holding. Okay, he can smell it. He's been irradiated with the smell. The smell is coming out of the fish and it's going into the rock and he can smell it. Now, the chap holding the fish... He's getting irradiated by the smell as well. The smell's coming out of the fish and it's going into him and he can smell it because his face has gone that kind of smell colour. Okay. But out of the two, only one of them is contaminated. Only one of them is contaminated. The person holding the fish, touching in contact, contact, will be contaminated. Okay, so the person holding the smelly fish is contaminated. They're both irradiated because the smell is going to both of them. Okay, now in reality, we don't really use those words for smells. We use them for nuclear radiation. Okay, so you need to know the, this process, irradiation. 
process of exposing an object to a source of radiation, for example, fruit is exposed to gamma rays in order to destroy bacteria, and it's said to be irradiated. The gamma rays, the radiation, the actual radiation itself, the gamma rays, go into the fruit. Okay? The fruit's being irradiated. Contamination is when the actual source of the radiation is on the object or in the object. Okay, so that source that was producing the gamma rays could um, maybe was broken and then it hits onto the fruit and then the actual source touching the fruit will contaminate the fruit. Okay, contamination is when it's touching, irradiation when it's the radiation. So I've got a little table that kind of summarizes the two. So irradiation, it occurs when an object is exposed to a source of radiation outside the object. Doesn't cause the object to become radioactive. It can be blocked with a suitable screen or shielding. It's stopped as soon as the source is removed. So as soon as you take away the um, the irradiation, the actual source that's irradiating the thing, it stops. It's gone. Contamination occurs if the source is on or in the actual object. A contaminated a contaminated object will be radioactive for so long as the source is on it. So if if um, I became contaminated with a radioactive source, it would be giving out radiation. Okay, so I could be called giving out radiation because I'm contaminated with that source, the source that gives out the radiation, that gives out the alpha, the beta, or the gamma. Once an object's contaminated, the radiation cannot be blocked from it. So once it's on me, it's going to be in go. It's going in. It's going to be irradiating me because it's in contact with me. It can be really difficult to remove all contamination. It's difficult to do that. Like you need to find those sources, and sometimes they can be small, sometimes they can be microscopic, that you can't see them. Okay, so your first task, boys and girls, your first task is to make a summary of contamination and irradiation. You need to have a definition for both. Okay, you can use my definition, you can change it, you can shorten it. You can summarise it like a spider diagram or a picture summary, a little picture showing um, the rock and a, and a fish would work quite well, I think. Um, or some other kind of creative way that you can summarise that bit of information. Okay, but that's your first task. It should take no more than 10 minutes. Okay, so pause the video here and make a summary of that information. Pause. Okay, so hopefully you've got that summary finished. If not, you need to pause the video and keep doing it. 10 minutes or so. Moving on. I've got some different radiation safety equipment. I've got some lead-lined um, clothing, clothing. I've got some tongs. I've got some thin rubber gloves. I've got some distance just i don't know how to picture that but i just got a ruler and a bit so it's distance and i've got a stop clock this is all radiation protection equipment i want you to think about which ones of these is going to reduce contamination irradiation or both okay so pause the video and have a think okay so the lead-lined equipment this is all about absorbing radiation this is the wearing a lead-lined apron or a skirt or a coat, okay, it's not gonna it's not gonna stop a radioactive source from going in contact with that um, equipment. It's not gonna stop the source getting onto the equipment or the clothing or the person. Okay, it's gonna absorb some radiation. It's gonna absorb it. So it's not gonna reduce the sources getting on the person, it's gonna absorb radiation going into the person. So this, so the lead line clothing that's going to reduce irradiation. Tongs, okay, tongs picking up, okay, this is a confusing one, okay, because tongs, they're going to certainly stop you from touching the radioactive sources. So if you need to move a source, position it, you use tongs so you don't have to touch it so you don't become contaminated, okay. But the distance increased between your hand and the radioactive source is it going to also reduce irradiation. So tongs reduce both contamination and irradiation. Stop clock, it's not going to stop a source from contaminating me if I'm showing it to a class, but it will reduce the length of time a radioactive source is out of the, the protective box. Okay, so it will reduce irradiation. Distance, okay, distance is going to not stop contamination really okay it, it might depending on what the distance is but the distance factor is all about irradiation the further you are away from a source the less irradiated you will be 
Okay. Thin rubber gloves. They are not going to reduce, they're not going to reduce um, irradiation. The majority of radiation will still get through these rubber gloves. They'll stop alpha particles, but they won't have any effect on beta radiation or gamma radiation. So these thin rubber gloves are there to stop contamination. Okay, they're stopping contamination to stop that radio radioactive source being on the person's hands. So when I'm um, demonstrating radiation, so when we look at it next year, I'll be using these this, these bits of equipment. Okay, I'll be using tongs and rubber gloves. I'll be timing how long the sources are out of the box for. I'll be making sure that all the students are at a safe distance from the source. Okay, now you need to know some of the ways that scientists and teachers will use radioactive sources safely. Okay, so your second task, you want to make a summary of three ways we can use radioactive sources safely. So you want to talk about three different ways we can use this equipment to be safe while using radioactive sources. You can make a little paragraph, you can make a little um, picture showing how you'd use some of this equipment, or you could make a little spider diagram with safety in the middle, and then you can pick some things to talk about. Um, it's up to you how you make that summary, but I want three different pieces of equipment or ideas that you'd use to be safe while using radioactive sources. Okay, so I pause the video here, spend uh, probably about 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes, um, looking at these different bits of equipment. So I pause the video here. Okay, so hopefully you've done that now. Moving on. Um, this is our last little task. Okay, and I've got the answers on the next slide. Which type of ionizing radiation is the most dangerous outside the body and why? Which type of ionizing radio which type or types of ionizing radiation is the most dangerous inside the body? Why? I want you to try and answer these two questions. This is our last task. Think about the properties of alpha, beta, and gamma. The penetration of each is the most important idea in answering these questions. So I pause the video and see if you can answer these questions. Okay, so pause the video here. It should, shouldn't take you more than four, maximum of 10 minutes. It should be less than that. Should be should, could be able to do it in five. Okay, so a short sentence for each. Okay, so my answer slide. We've got, ah, um, oh, this is my question slide. This is task three. Answer the factory recall questions two and three. So, answers. Beta and gamma radiation are the most dangerous outside the body, okay, because they can penetrate inside. They can go through our skin and into our internal organs. Okay, gamma and beta are penetrating enough that they can go inside our body where they can cause damage. Alpha radiation isn't as dangerous outside the body. Alpha radiation is stopped by a small amount of air, quite a short distance of air, and it will be stopped by your skin. So it won't be able to really get into your internal organs. Okay, but if you were to ingest, if you were to eat by accident an alpha source and it's inside your body, all of that radiation is going to get absorbed by inside your body. Okay, it will damage a very localized area, but because it's so highly ionizing, it can cause a lot of damage. So inside the body, alpha emitter will be much more dangerous than a gamma emitter or a beta emitter. Okay, they can still be dangerous by all means, but alpha emitters will be much more dangerous if they're ingested or you're contaminated with them. Okay, so um, I hope you're all doing well at home boys and girls. I hope those of you who are going into school are learning lots. Um, take care of each other, take care of your families, and I shall talk to you next week. Bye bye.